Hello, everyone. Welcome to Time Chat. I'm your host, Dr. Yvonne Khan. Today on Time Chat, we'll be speaking with the director of Khan Tutorial's renowned SHSAT program, Mr. Mohammed Hussain. For many generations, New York City's specialized high schools, Stuyvesant, Bronx Science, and Brooklyn Tech, have represented the best that New York City had to offer in public education. With over 14 Nobel laureates, dozens of Pulitzer Prize winners, and countless professionals from just three high schools, these institutions have symbolized the American dream for many different ethnic groups in New York's very diverse history. Right now, in order for any student to get into the New York City Specialized High Schools, they need to take the SHSAT, or the Specialized High Schools Admission Test, a two and a half hour exam during the October of your student's eighth grade. Every October, about 28,000 students take the SHSAT, and only the top 10% of test takers get an offer at the original three. The challenging exam is all multiple choice and only tests English and math. Today we are joined by Mr. Hussein, who leads Khan's tutorial's SHSAT program. And over the past 20 years, Khan's has helped nearly 2,000 students gain acceptance to specialized high schools. Last year, Mr. Hussein's program helped 254 students get in last year alone. Having been a KT SHSAT student himself, who later graduated from Stuyvesant, and then for later on to become an instructor, Mr. Hussein now heads the entire program. And he has a unique perspective on the exam, having gone through the journey himself. Without further ado, Mr. Mohammed Hussain. Mohammed, thank you so much for joining us today on Time Chat. Thank you for having me, Dr. Khan. It's no surprise for a lot of folks at home. You and I got a chance to work very closely together uh, in all of cons, but today we're going to be focusing on your program, the SHSAT. Great. Congratulations on the most recent cycle. Thank you. What were some highlights about this past year's SHSAT for you? Well, I mean, this past year we were very, very organized, which is one thing that I really liked. Um, the instructors were super dedicated. You know, the training sessions went really, really well. Um, overall communication, content, curriculum, everything was just flawless. So, you know, it was, it was a great year. So, as for many of those watching at home, the exam just happened about two weeks ago. Right. And you have uh, dozens to hundreds of KT kids uh, taking the test. Mm -hmm. How did your students feel after the exam? Um, I mean, it was a great feeling for us because a lot of the students came back um, to all 10 of our locations and they said the test was really easy. They said that there were no surprises on the exam. Um, they actually felt that our tests were a lot harder than the real exam, which is you know what we've been telling them all year. So I mean it was a great feeling to be right. Um, but you know the students felt very prepared. They were confident. The parents were confident. So overall it was pretty great. So this isn't your first uh, time at cons. You, you started off as a youngster. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about your history uh, around the SHSAT. You later on went into right. Stuyvesant. So tell us a little about that journey for you. Well, um, I actually got affiliated with cons back in the sixth grade. Mm -hmm. So uh, as, as I was starting to, to study for the specialized high school's entrance exam, um, I actually took the cons tutorial SHSAT course um, for all the parents at home. Um, but you know, you know, one great thing that I had the advantage of having was Dr. Khan as my instructor. So um, that was great. Um, sorry. So we were. Yeah. So as many of you folks just heard, I happened to be Muhammad's SHSAT teacher back in 2004. Uh, many of folks know at home that my father was uh, ill and fighting um, an illness for several years. So that was one of the first years that I became involved, and I happened to be the teacher for Muhammad. And um, he went on to Stuyvesant High School. Yeah. So. Uh, for the viewers at home, tell us a little about your experience as a student 10 to 12 years ago in our classrooms. Oh, in the classrooms. I mean, it was, it was very new because it was this test that I needed to study for, you know, scrambled paragraphs, logical reasonings. I had no idea what any of this stuff was. Um, but coming in, you know, the environment was great. The classes were pretty, it was really small. Um, we had about like 20 kids in a class. So it, it was, it's very different from going from 35 students in you know, my eighth grade classes to something small like that where everyone was pretty motivated to study and everyone you know, was dedicated. Um, the instructors were great. You, know, you did a great job teaching me. You know, we all, well, a lot of our my pleasure. Thank uh. you. Um, a lot of the um, classmates that I was with at the consultorial um, you know, class for the specialized high schools actually went to Stuyvesant with me. So it was great to see that, you know, the year-long process that we had studying together paid off and we get to, got to spend the next four years together. So folks know that I en ended up at Bronx Science, mm -hmm. but you and so many others got a higher score than so many of us in the past and mm -hmm. went to Stuyvesant, the, the, the crown jewel of New York City's public education system. Tell us a little about your time at Stuyvesant. Well, Stuyvesant was an amazing experience from the first time I ever 
visited at the open house, which you recommended to me. Um, it, it was just amazing, you know, 10 floors, escalators, the swimming pool, you know, everything was just mind blowing to look at. In terms of academics, you know, it was a little challenging at first, but um, you know, once you stick to a schedule, everything, you know, works itself out. In terms of extracurriculars, there's so much to do. There's so many mm -hmm. clubs, there's so many different sports. Um, it was just, it was a great experience overall. So right now, there's been a lot of controversy around the policy as far as the admissions goes. Right. Um, what is the admissions criteria right now? Mm -hmm. And when should students start thinking about attending a specialized high school or preparing for it? Okay. Um, so currently, it's just solely based on the SHSAT exam. Um, no matter what you have, what your GPAs are, or your attendance, none of that matters right now. Um, but there have been talks about changing that around. So, I mean, we'll see where that goes. Um, and Sorry, what was your second question? I was also asking about the fact that um, when should students start thinking about mm -hmm. it? Now that it's, it, yeah. all they have to do is take this test in October of their eighth grade. Right. When should students even thinking about, think about starting to prepare? I mean, definitely at least a year beforehand. Um, as soon as a student starts seventh grade, that's when our SHSAT program starts, a CONS tutorial. Um, we've seen that it takes a significant amount of time to actually understand everything because the material itself, you know, it, there's material from eighth grade, ninth grade, tenth grade. Um, it just takes a lot of practice. So, you know, you don't want to practice, like, you won't have a lot of time to practice if you're going to start the summer before. Mm -hmm. You know, the earlier you start, the better. You know, if you want to start looking at SHSAT books in sixth grade, that's even better for you. So, I mean, the earlier the better, but I would definitely recommend at the start of seventh grade. So, when I was a kid, my folks, Dr. Munsur Khan and Naima mm -hmm. Khan, had to pressure me into sending me to my course and forcing me to study, and that's, that hasn't yeah. changed. <laughs> what, um, what influenced you to even want to go to the specialized high schools, and why should families right. uh, value the specialized high school pathways? You have uh, had nearly 2,000 students that are Bangladeshi from your program alone get into the school. So what, why did you want to go? I mean, first of all, going to the open house, it was just a mind-blowing experience. You know, SH, uh, for Stuyvesant, um, the building was beautiful. That was mm -hmm. one thing that got me. Um, but I would say the most important thing is just the support of my mom and my dad. Yeah. Uh, my entire family, um, it was just, they really wanted it for me because it, it's a great start to you know my career. Um, it's a great start. It's a great stepping stone to getting to a good college, to getting to a good job. Um, and my parents, you know, they've heard stories about Stuyvesant, Bronx Science, Brooklyn Tech from everyone else, and they were really, really dedicated. My mom used to bring me to cons every weekend. Mm -hmm. um, she, you know, devoted her entire time to making sure that I'm studying at home, making sure that everything that you used to tell us that I used to do at home. Um, so, I mean, a huge part of that was my mom. And at the same time, yeah. Mohammed, I don't mean to cut you off, but not every parent at home is is as as dedicated as, as right. your moms. And so as, an, as a leader, mm -hmm. as the director of the entire program, what differences in the parental involvement do you see of those students ending up at the specialized high schools right. and those parents that, whose students fall just short? What differences in the, in the involvement by them do you see at mm -hmm. home? Okay, so um, for example, last year we had 254 acceptances, right? Okay. That was a huge jump from the year before. A huge reason for that is the increased awareness for parents. Okay. So what we've seen is that all the parents that are dedicated, that are constantly talking to the instructors, constantly following up with the students, making sure they have their homework, making sure they have their classwork done, um, they're just the ones asking questions, um, the ones showing up to PTCs. Those parents are so dedicated that it makes the students understand that, hey, my mom is working so hard, my dad is working so hard for me, um, and it just makes them more inclined to study, right? Um, not to say that you know parents who aren't dedicated or parents who just can't have the time um, aren't really involved, but it's just the fact that you know if, if the parents physically there, it's a huge stepping stone for the students. And I'll tell you, you know, from my experience, you had a chance to be taught by Dr. Khan and work close so closely with Mrs. Khan, my parents. Um, and growing up, my mom and dad had to really yeah. make sure that I was practicing at all times because I wasn't a very dedicated, focused student who always wanted to practice. I needed that push from my parents constantly. Right. So now to a little bit more of a serious topic. Um, a lot of students who do get into the specialized high schools from the Bangladeshi community in New York City, mm -hmm. they do struggle once they get there. Right. Maybe 30, 30, 30 you know, one third mm -hmm. of the students who go there do have some difficulty adjusting. Right. They graduate, but it's not always the, they don't make the best of it as, right. as they can. So what advice would you have for families and parents 
if their child is struggling or if they're headed to the specialized high school this fall? I mean, if the child is struggling, it, it's going to take a little bit of time to adjust to the specialized high schools. Like, for example, for me personally, coming from a, a middle school in Jamaica, Queens, going to Stuyvesant, you know, it was a struggle at first. Um, I had to adjust my time management skills. You know, I had to be studying more. Um, figuring out, you know, what to do at what times, which subjects to study for. But the thing is, it's just, it's all practice. It's all, you know, dedication. Um, what I would suggest... Well, how was it for you? Did you I adjust mean, well? And, I, and did, it, were there struggles for you? Yeah, yeah, there were definitely struggles for me. You know, going, first of all, going from Jamaica to Stuyvesant every day, an hour, an hour, and 15 minutes. Um, it, it was it was a huge change because I used to walk to school before. Yeah. But I mean, I adjusted because in the first few months, you know, I was just sleeping on the train. But then I started studying on the train. I started reading, doing my homework, plotting, you know, what to do at what times just to make sure that you know I get through everything um, what I would say is just you know stick it out if you see that something isn't working just change it a little bit try to do something a little bit different and then you know eventually you'll get to a point where you're very comfortable in your environment and comfortable with what you're doing and then you know at that point is when you're going to be able to you know successfully do everything and at the same time there's so many families at home where their students are already in high school and they're not at the specialized they still have college to look forward to, grad school, the yeah. rest of their career and life to look forward to. What advice would you have for those motivated students? I mean, a motivated student is a motivated student no matter, no matter where you are. I have a lot of friends who went to uh, non-specialized high schools mm -hmm. who ended up doing you know, a lot better than me in college and you know, their careers are set and everything. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the whole thing is just focus on what you want to do, mm -hmm. um, study, you know, take your SATs, ACTs, you know, everything. Whatever I'm doing at Stuyvesant, you know, other students are doing at other schools. So you just need to stay focused. That's like the most important thing. Um, have a goal and just try to hit that goal as you know hard as possible. Let's fast forward, fast track a little bit to the program right now. Mm -hmm. Your program that you're running. Everyone wants to know what makes your program so successful. What is going on with those diagnostics? Who's making them? Um, how many teachers do you have? How many how many kids per class? Right. These are questions that I get all the time you get all the time, that our mm -hmm. teachers and families get all the time. Give us the inside scoop. All right, well, I mean, the most important thing is definitely the dedication, and dedication amongst the entire team at Constitutorial. And, you know, that includes parents, you know, like I said before, PTCs. Mm -hmm. That includes all of our instructors. PTCs are parent? Parent-teacher conferences. And these are mandatory? Yeah, your, these your are mandatory, okay. right. So, um, like you mentioned before about our diagnostic exams, so our diagnostic exams are 100% our material. Okay. We have a uh, curriculum manager who mm -hmm. works for us, um, and he basically designs the entire thing. Mm. We have a bunch of our Sahai instructors working together to come come up with questions. You know, analyzing the student handbooks, analyzing all the different books that we have. Mm -hmm. um, to create a perfect test, right? We did that a few years ago, and it went from a perfect test to eight to nine different perfect tests, yep. um, which is you know a huge feat for us as a team. Um, in addition to that, you know, the instructors are getting trained on a regular basis. Who trains um, them? We do, like the management at the SUSAT program. Mm -hmm. um, you do yourself, you know, what I do. Um, we have directors constantly looking over the SAHA instructors. Um, it's just the communication between everyone is what's key. A lot of folks may say, right. it's a lot of students. Yeah. Uh, what are the class sizes at, at your SHSAT classes? I mean, the SHSAT classes are anywhere from 12 to 15 students. Per class? Per class, yeah. Okay, and? I mean, obviously, we're going to have a lot of students overflowing at certain times. But what we end up doing is, based on these diagnostic exams, we're able to break up classes. So the class started you know, two months ago. Right now, each location has about two classes, a class A and a class B. Come the next diagnostic, they're going to have A1, A2, B1, B2. It's going to keep splitting and splitting and splitting. So the students take the exam. Mm -hmm. Based on their ability, just like an actual test, they're placed into the class Correct. so they can keep advancing. Exactly. Um, a lot of people have a lot of rumors out there. I mean, the Shuni Kanyonik, why should I like it? Like, what about the cost of your attending your classes? I mean, the what, cost, is that, what does it cost? It costs about $13 per hour. It's like very, very, very cheap. Um, you know, if you think about it, as a whole, yes, it's a lot of money, but it spans the entire year. You know, the dedication, like you can't put a price on dedication. Okay. And uh, about, tell me about at what point in the year are most students enrolling then? I mean, we have multiple points where we have a lot of students enrolling. Um, this year, you know, we were able to start off early with, with a significant number of students, which is great. Because, um, you know, or like I said before, the earlier you start, the better it is for you. Thank you, Mohammed, mm -hmm. for those thoughts. Give me one second. We're just going to go to a quick commercial break. You're watching Time Chat with Dr. Ivan Khan, and we'll be right back after these messages.
Welcome out of Time Chat. I'm your host, Dr. Yvonne Khan. Today we're speaking with Mr. Muhammad Hussain, who runs the SHSAT program for the specialized high schools at Khan Tutorial. Back to your question, back to our questions about the class sizes. So the class sizes are 12 to 15 mm -hmm. students per class. The, you guys keep splitting the yeah. classes down. The cost is $13 per hour. Most students are starting about a year ahead of time. What are you looking forward to this year? I mean, this year is just perfecting whatever we couldn't do last year. Okay. Um, you know, we want to have as many students get accepted as possible. There were a few kinks here and there that we needed to fix, very, very minor things. Um, just want to implement those. You know, every year it's a, it's a struggle to get new Sci High instructors because they have to be trained a certain way and you have to follow up with them, evaluate them. So, you know, we have a lot of our old Sci High instructors retiring this year, so it's going to be a challenge to replace them. But, you know, that's a challenge that I'm looking forward to. So, as far as the training goes, um, you were taught by me right. and I was taught by Dr. Khan. So, please speak a little bit about Dr. Khan's influence over your program. I mean, Dr. Khan is SHSAT, a Khan's tutorial. Um, everything that we do, everything that, you know, um, we have become at this point is because of Dr. Khan. Um, students who, you know, graduated last year and the year before, um, they've gotten, you know, packets that are like Dr. Khan's math topics, Dr. Khan's logical reasoning questions, Dr. Khan's reading comprehension passages. Um, and that's because, like, Dr. Khan would call me in the middle of the you night. You guys work yeah, very we closely together very on close the curriculum. Yeah, Tell he, me about the late night yeah, calls to, to you. Yeah, definitely, definitely, of course. Um, that's not my favorite part. Um, so Dr. Khan would call me in the middle of the night, like 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, you know, it, no, no, no boundaries. So he would just call me and be like, hey, Moho, quick question. Yeah, is this on the test? Did you put this on the test? Um, is this topic on the exam? Can you write this down? I had a notebook that I used to use for Khan's tutorial all the time. In the back of my notebook, there's a section that just says Dr. Khan on it. Random little thoughts Dr. Khan would you know, bring up to me, I would write down and you would implement it right away. Hey, I think this is a great idea for us to do. You know, this, this, this topic is on the exam. I saw this topic. No, like, all throughout the day, you know, in the middle of the night, he would call me, and I would gladly, oh, Dr. Khan's calling me at 12 o'clock. I know what this is about, Yeah. right? Um, but, you know, everything that, you know, he's a brilliant person, right? He's a brilliant educator, and, you know, his, the, the, like you said before, the education that he provided, he taught you, you taught me, I'm teaching these instructors, these instructors are teaching their students, and it's, it's a cycle, right? So this cycle is going to continuously go on forever, and that's because of Dr. Khan. Well, I'll tell you, you know, we spent August, September, October, the final three months right. of the SHSA team, and I was at the workshops in Jackson Heights, KT Jackson Heights, for every single Friday. And I still made sure to attend a lot of the yeah. parent-teacher conferences throughout New York City. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the times of the year that makes me feel closest to my late father. Um, he would be around the clock all year long teaching at Jackson Heights mm -hmm. till 8.30, yeah. 9 p.m. And, you know, God bless my, my very, very supportive wife and kids at home who are, you know, dealing with me coming home at 9.30, 10.30 on a regular basis on Fridays and Saturdays, all because I'm always wondering, what would Dad do? What would Dr. Right. Khan do? Um, so on a citywide level, mm -hmm. what would you like to see for the Bangladeshi community of New York City's and, 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 this, and the student body? In terms of specialized high schools? In terms of, let's education? start with all yeah. Bangladeshi students, right. and then we'll go into specialized high schools okay. and any other uh, common core areas right. and for the younger grades, anything that, that are goals for you. Okay, I mean, obviously we wanna want the Bengali community to perform to the best of their abilities. Um, you know, in terms of high school, you know, getting into the top high schools, whether they be specialized or non-specialized, top SAT scores, top ACT scores. Overall, as a group, you know, we want to let everyone know that hey, education is our number one priority. You know that's been instilled in us forever, um, and you know we want Why? to be part of. Some some people will say ki daa kar. Ata parla hai ki 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 daa kar. Mane to khawa daa karo, tin jai karo ba. Mane kaj kora show like what's yeah. why why does education matter so much to you and the entire team at Cons? I mean, education is something like what we just discussed, you know, it lives on forever. So Dr. Khan taught you, you taught me, I'm teaching these instructors, these instructors are going to teach their students, and it's just, it's a cycle that's, you know, it's a positive cycle. Okay. Um, everyone's learning from each other, you know, there are things that are being changed. Um, education is forever, so, you know, that's, that's the primary thing. Um, you One thing I used to tell my mentees um, at my old job is that no matter what job you have, no one can ever take away your degrees. Yeah. Your job can change many times yeah. in your life, but no one can ever take exactly. away your degrees. So, sorry to interrupt no, no you. Um, so, goals for the New York City Bangladeshi community. Go on. I mean, 
is just to do the best that we can possibly do. You know, get into all the specialized high schools, get into all the non-specialized high schools. Um, if for Common Core students, you know, get double fours on their Common Core. Fifth ELA, graders, why fifth are graders. why are uh, fours so important in fifth grade? Because you know, you're when you're going to be applying to middle schools, you want to get into the talented and gifted programs. Um, you know, Hunter College High School. The Hunter yeah, there's okay. a lot of there's a lot of opportunities out there. And what are you seeing nationally in the, in, in America as far as South Asians? Bangladeshis, Indians, Pakistanis, mm -hmm. Nepalese, Sri Lankans. What are you What are you noticing as far as academics and career readiness yeah. for South Asians in overall? Yeah, I mean, definitely, there's been an overall trend in you know education that's just been going up and up and up in terms of like you know admissions to top colleges, careers. You know, everyone is just improving upon the generations before, and which is the trend that we should continue following forever. God willing. Tell us about yourself a little bit personally. How would your friends describe you, Muhammad? Um, wow, I didn't expect that question. Um, I guess I'm, I'm pretty calm, quiet. Um, I don't really talk as much. But you know, once you become really, really good friends with me, I don't shut up. So that's a pretty, I, I'm sorry, I don't be quiet. Um, so that, that's, um, that's one thing. I'm, I'm pretty dedicated. I'm like very involved with my family. Um, I love my friends. I love sports. It's a huge thing. We, all, we always argue about that. Um, especially because our opinions differ. So he's a Patriots fan. I'm a Giants fan, and um, he's 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 a Laker fan yeah. more. But, but yeah, he's, he's converting fan. into a Knicks fan, yeah. which is uh, so we have a lot of heated yeah. discussions. The most most important discussions we have yeah. about sports. Exactly. Um, uh, tell us a little bit more. Tell us a little bit more uh, about goals for uh, yourself right. and uh, the community around you. Any mm -hmm. hobbies? Anything else? Yeah. I mean. Um, as an undergrad, I was a bio major, biological sciences. Um, I decided to uh, forgo med school, and, and instead I want to pursue a career in finance now. Um, a majority of it being the fact that you know I was able to work so closely with Constitutorial, help Constitutorial grow as a company, and I really, really, really enjoyed it. Um, so I feel like you know once I get that academic background, I'm going to be able to do a whole lot more. Um, in terms of you know hobbies, like sports, I played music for a while with my mom. Um, Oh, that's, that's pretty much it. You get to do a lot of um, uh, leading and a lot of mentoring. Are there any leadership-related uh, instances that stick out in your mind? You've been a mentor to countless people after you. Right. And uh, is there any type of mentorship moment that you want to discuss before we go into your final message for viewers I mean, at home? There, there are a lot. Uh, I can't pinpoint any one particular thing. But I mean, obviously, one big thing would be my family. Um, I have a lot of younger cousins and my little brother. He went to Bronx Science. My cousin went to Stuyvesant. Another cousin is going to uh, Cardozo mm -hmm. and the Da Vinci program. So, you know, everyone, this idea of education has been embedded in them. I like to think, you know, partly because of me and because of my family and how, you know, we value education. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, and they all look up to you. Don't, 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 yeah. don't mistake I mean, that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that's, it's just the mentorship there, you know, it's just, you just want to learn and you just want to continue, you know, being better as a person. And I feel like, you know, you have to show that by example. So, you know, if I'm able to continue doing what I'm doing and I may be keeping everyone happy, um, it'll just make it easier for everyone else to follow through. Um, in terms of the Sci High instructors, you know, they, I'm their boss, um, but they know that I'm also like their friend and I understand. I've been in their position a few years ago um, and, you know, it's the understanding, the communication that's there. Um, but you know, other than that, it's, I can't pinpoint anything particular. We've learned a lot about the program from when you took it 12, mm -hmm. 13 years ago to how it is now, all the test takers last month telling you it was easy. Um, what final message do you have for our students and families at home? They want, a lot of them want to follow in your footsteps and beat your score and, and do some amazing things as well. So what message do you have for them? I mean, definitely, you know, do the best that you can possibly do. Always stay focused. Um, one big thing that I would like to mention to everyone is that you should ask for help when you need help. Um, I was never afraid to ask my friends, my colleagues, whoever it is, if, if I need help, I will ask you for help because, you know, there's no shame in asking. There's no shame in learning something new. Um, and that's, that's, the, that's one of the biggest things, you know, stay focused, have a goal. Um, stay focused, make sure you know you do outline a pathway for you to achieve your goal. Don't just think that, hey, I want to do this, it's just going to magically happen. You need to take steps before you actually get to your goal. Um, so that would be the biggest takeaway from what I've learned these past, what, 24 years. Mohammed, thank you so thank much you for joining much. us today. It's been a pleasure to have you on Time Chat. 
We can't wait to have you back in the spring to find out how the SHSCT program is going, how other things are going on both at cons and in your life. And thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you very much for having me. So we just had a chance to hear from uh, Mr. Mohammed Hussain, the Director of Operations at Constitutorial and also the Director of the SHSAT program. As you can see, even though Mr. Hussain works in the specialized high school landscape, his dedication to education expands far beyond just the specialized high schools. Whether it's the Common Core, whether it's strong, talented, and gifted programs that you can attend, whether it's fantastic middle schools, and Mohammed and I have just visited 14 middle schools in the last two days um, around partnerships and projects. And all of these things add up to having a complete, holistic individual who can really, really succeed in high school on their way to a fantastic university. From there, Mohammed's been through it, I've been through it. Whether it's grad school, whether it's a full-time job, we're always looking out for ways to mentor those after you. For me personally and for Mohammed, we were very, very lucky to have fantastic parents. I actually looked up a lot to Muhammad's mom and dad and his entire family for inspiration and a lot of mentorship um, activities that I get uh, become involved in. I'm sure uh, my family's involvement in Muhammad's education, uh, you know, it, it's a two-way street. And uh, just want to remind everyone that whether your child's attending Bronx Science or whether your child's attending Forest Hills High School or Townsend Harris or even the local school, um, a child's education is unique to that child, and it's always important to fully, fully explore what's be the best ideal fit for them. As a parent, I'm constantly thinking about that for my kids, even though today uh, my daughter's turning three. I'm thinking about which preschool teacher is a more appropriate fit for her style and her learning needs. So, you know, even though we may be teachers on screen, we, we do have a lot of family that we're always con constantly involved with. So. Um, if you ever have any questions as far as your children's pathways, we're always here for you. Um, I know Muhammad is. Uh, as far as I go um, and my, you know, my, my work here, I really, really want to thank you all for watching today's episode of Time Chat. It was really, really uh, meant a lot to me to have today's guest here with us. And I can't wait to see you all next week. I'm your host, Dr. Yvonne Khan. And until then, pay it forward.